And hi everyone, welcome to our WKYC.com High School Football Game of the Week preview show. I'm Dave DiNatale, that's Tyler Carey. We, we are back and better than ever here in 2021 and we are here to announce, amongst other things, our Game of the Week for Week 1 this Friday night. And TC, this was you were monitoring the poll very closely here in the last 48 hours. We had three terrific nominees, and we had a little back and forth going in the last oh, yeah. uh, 12 hours or so. Down but, uh, to the wire, yeah, absolutely. as they say, Dino. Well, let me first say how excited I am, and I know you're excited too, to be back doing this, to be back voting. Of course, we were unable yes. to have the polls last year because of the COVID pandemic. We still did the games, but... And that logistically, it just would have made it just made more sense to pick one and go with it. But now we're back. We get to hear your voice and you made your voices heard. As I said, as Dino said, back and forth throughout. But at the end of the day, our first game of the week for the 2021 season will be Benedictine and Walsh yes. Jesuit yes. in Cuyahoga Falls. They just edged out Euclid and Aurora <laughs> Avon and Brunswick, kind of a distant third, which somewhat surprising there. But. Obviously, all fan bases tried to get their um, respective alumni and students out to vote. And as I said, they made themselves heard, and we're going to Summit County. Well, I got to tell you, I think the, the Walsh Jesuit, uh, you talk about getting the alumni, getting the parents, and getting the community out. Uh, I wonder if my cousins voted in this. Yeah, yeah Walsh <laughs> went, went pretty crazy on social media. and I, we, we love to be loved. We love to have people who want us to be coming down and uh, appreciate everybody voting. And uh, they're excited. Talk about, we'll, we'll talk about our game here first. The Warriors and the Bengals, I, I think, is going to be a terrific matchup. It was a playoff game last year. We were all set to do it in Euclid. I, I, I couldn't have been more excited to, to broadcast the game. And then, and then the skies opened up. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, the game ended up being postponed well, until about Saturday. Six others. Yeah. In the and area. we weren't able to to do the game. Um, so I'm excited from that standpoint to be to be doing the game, but. Uh, excited first to get a look at Walsh because they really think now with Nick Alexander as their head coach, they're really trending upwards and they really believe that this could be a breakout year for them. And I don't even breakout. I mean, talking about, you know, really making a statement uh, here in, in Northeast Ohio. Well, you talk about where they were, Dino, before he took over two winless seasons yes. in a row. I mean, it was the bottom of the graveyard for the Warriors and to just kind of evolve as they have, just steadily creep up. They had a really good season last year, COVID-shortened season it was, but still a very good football team. They only played Hoban. They lost the game 27-14, yes. which that's an accomplishment considering Hoban beats most of its opponents by about 30. <laughs> Thought they had a chance to really make a run and possibly get that rematch with the Knights, but they were upset by these same Benedictine Bengals in the playoffs, 27-20 overtime game that, as you mentioned, we had to miss because of rain and scheduling conflicts. Now back this year, they lose David Wallabaugh. Their star defensive tackle or offensive tackle goes to Kentucky, but they still have a lot of returning starters. Matt Natale returns a quarterback. Casey Kish at linebacker. Charlie Klug or Klug, however you pronounce it, I apologize, at uh, defensive back. I think you said it. They really feel like this could be the year that they could compete with the Hobans of the world, the other big powers of Division II. They're not the same conference anymore. They're now in the Crown Conference, as right. we were talking about earlier. But it's really going to be fascinating to see if they can take that next step and become a, and become a contender for the state playoffs. Benedictine, on the other hand, uh, as you mentioned, you know, had a nice run in the playoffs and, and were able to beat this very same Warriors team last year. Had to, had to go at it a lot of last year without Ronnie Schultz, mm. uh, who they were looking forward to a big senior season from. But it gave younger guys an opportunity to learn and, and to be ready. And I think the, the maturation happened by the time the Bengals got to the playoffs. So I think they feel like uh, there may be a, this would have been a, a reload season. I don't want to call it a rebuilding season. I think this program is better than that. <laughs> but uh, I think they're even ahead now of the reloading because of injuries. Totally agree. And again, not that you wanted the injuries to Ronnie Schultz and others. And for that reason, they had what some would consider a bit of a down year last year. But it paid off in the playoffs where C.J. Yarbrough, the young quarterback, yep. 
got to come in and get that upset win over Walsh. She ended up getting beat up by Hoban, but again, there we no shame in that. A lot of teams lose to Hoban that way, but Yarborough now, ha- now has that experience that he can take into this year and get hit the ground running. Uh, Daryl Bettingfield Jr. at yes. linebacker is going to lead that defense. Love watching Toledo him play. Commit. Love watching Fantastic him play. You're in for a treat. Player. Yeah, you're in for a treat. Uh, to, if you like defensive football and defensive players, uh, love watching Bettingfield. He, he's an absolute stud at linebacker. So now they get a chance to prove that, okay, that little run in the postseason last year wasn't a fluke, yep. that this team actually is ready to contend again in D2 and possibly go on another run where – now they're kind of going to have their target on that, that target on their back a little bit, but a chance, a very good chance to really prove themselves right away against one of their top rivals. And you talked about the team that everybody, when you think about, especially in the parochial world in Division II, Hoban. Everybody's, Hoban's got the target on their back. Well, I can remember a Ronnie Schultz Benedictine team that, that gave Hoban a run for their money a couple of years ago mm. in late in the season and I think maybe into the playoffs. And then you mentioned Walsh gave you know, uh, hoping to run for their money in the regular season last year. I think both of these programs feel like maybe that gap is closing. I mean, Hoban has been so good for so long um, that, you know, maybe they're catching up now to that elite level. Well, you got to think at some point Hoban's going to come down from that mountaintop. I mean, when you win as much as they do, at some point it's going to end. Now, that's not saying, oh, they're just going to be bad. And they do lose a lot of starters this year. We'll get to that in a little bit. But... At some point, this is cyclical. The other teams manage to find ways to adapt, to catch up. And we've talked about Benedictine for years, I think, was that big parochial school team in the area, besides Ignatius and St. Edward, was one of those established parochial school teams. Hoban kind of caught up and passed them. Does the pendulum swing back the other way? We're going to have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. So, Friday night, I'll be out at Walsh Jesuit for the play-by-play. Benedictine and Walsh Jesuit will get our coverage started around 6.50 or so with the kickoff at 7. Now, I'll be doing the play-by-play. Tyler will be coming in via Zoom. It's awesome if you've not seen us do this before. I really have enjoyed this. Uh, the you silver know. linings of the pandemic last year. Yeah, that's right. You learn things. And Tyler, Tyler will be uh, cutting in with scores, his thoughts on the game as well during the course uh, of the night. So that'll be our produ- kind of our production Friday. We're, we're excited to be back our fourth year uh, in the game of the week, but it's not the only game happening Friday. And, you know, we mentioned that the nominees we had, um, you could make the case, and I, our friends, uh, you know, Matt Gal and at, at Cleveland.com had his top 25, and all six of our nominees were in that list. Um, there are some good week one games, really good week one games uh, coming up this weekend. And we only had three of them on our list. There were plenty more that we were looking at, just the nominees that we had. Euclid Aurora, which very nearly won. Yep. That, I think, is going to be a very intriguing game. We know how good Aurora is. We know Euclid every year is one of those very good Division I teams. New coach that, this yep, year. New yep. coach coming in. And, of course, uh, Bob Mahalik over in Aurora. Yep. We always know what he's going to bring to the table. I really, because Aurora, and, and they've beaten Division I teams in the past, mm-hmm. I'm really going to be interested to see how they do it again in week one. We're right off the bat, okay, here's one of those established yeah. powers in the Cleveland area. Can they get off to a hot start? Now, if they lose that game, it's not really going to hurt them in the long run, right. but you want to get that momentum early. Yeah, I, I think they really feel like, you know, down at Aurora, um, this is a really good senior class. They, they've, this is kind of the year uh, I think they earmarked a little bit that, we might have something special here. And, you know, they came so close a couple of years ago mm. uh, to, to getting to a state championship game. And, you know, they kind of feel like this might be another opportunity for them. And it really will start with Euclid because Euclid, you've got just athleticism, defense, speed uh, it, against – a, a very physical Aurora team. So I'm excited to see how that one plays out. And, and I'm excited to see what happens over at uh, Brunswick Auto Mart Stadium. I think with uh, the Blue Devils, one of the teams that we saw a couple of times last year, um, they're starting to climb up to being a, a top team in Division One, Region One, against a perennial power in Division Two in Avon. And we know, again, how good Avon has been over the last few years, the only thing they can't do is get over that last hump and yeah. beat Hoven or Maslin to win that state championship. I think you said it last year when Brunswick beat Canton McKinley in the playoffs, that that was kind of that signature win yes. for that program. No showing question. No we're question. back. We've arrived. 
I mentioned Kent McKinley, too. They're going to have a big game this week one against Menor yes. at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Obviously, it's been a very eventful offseason for the Bulldogs for all the wrong reasons. Um, the whole situation with a lot of their coaches being let go for the controversy with a student athletes. Yeah. Can, can they can they push all that aside? And they've had, you know, it's been about six weeks or so. You know, have, can they push that aside and, and get focused on, on a good season? I, that's going to be pretty interesting to see how the Bulldogs come together against such a tough opponent in week one in Menor. No doubt. All right, Dino, on that note, are you ready for my opening top five to start this season? Tyler's top five. <laughs> yes, your top five teams uh, that we'll be watching in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we'll do this every week as we wrap up our show. Who is in Tyler's top five? Well, number five to start, this is almost kind of by default. It is the Archbishop Hoban Knights. Now, in most years, you would expect them to be number two or number one. Right. We currently have them at number five because – Let's be honest, they did lose a lot yes. from that great team over the past few years that has won five state championships out of six attempts. Shane Ham, for example, their yeah. quarterback, four-year starter. He's gone. They're going to have to replace him. But we know that this Hoban team is just capable of reloading every single year. Um, they've got four starters back in the offensive line, uh, Colton, Colton uh, Bernhardt. Michael No yeah. coming back on that, that and unit. that's really where it starts. It, it, it's kind of always started. Uh, you know, Tim Terrell loves you know to to kind of start from the inside out, and you know they always talk about the skill players that they've had. But I've always thought that it, you know being able to physically dominate opponents has been something that Hoban's done so well. And they will certainly be able to do that with again those linemen coming back. Uh, Colton Burkhart is the correct name. I apologize for mispr mispronouncing that. Um, they'll start off uh, with a test early. Bishop Sycamore yeah. from Columbus. So uh, good luck to the Knights. Number four is a team I am really, really intrigued by, Dino, and that is the Stowe Monroe Falls yes. Bulldogs. Yes. Always a team that kind of fluctuates in some years. One year they'll be really, really good. The other year they'll be around 500. But they've got some studs Loaded. on offense. Owen Bainbridge, the quarterback, going to your alma mater, Bowling Green. So congratulations Thank on your you. success. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Xavier Preston, the running back cornerback, being recruited as an athlete. Mason Minnell on the offensive line. I think this team, Dino, has a really good chance. If this is the year that they're really going to make a run at that state championship game, this is the time to do it. With that lineup they have, We'll see if they can compete with the Hobans and or Hoban, with the St. Edward and yeah. the St. Ignatius and the Manners, of the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, you know, Division One, Region One. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, it, it, it's Cleveland's elite and Northeast Ohio's elite top programs. And Stowe, this has been kind of building. And, and I, I think it's just it's, it's a look at their roster. It's a look at what they did towards the end of last year. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I just all you know. You and I talked about them a lot during this off season. Like, gotta keep an eye on Stowe, and you know they're not going to take anybody by surprise. But I really do think they're an elite program now, especially in that suburban league. No. They're the heavy favorites in that conference. Number three, Dino, is another program that has had success in the past, but only recently and probably at a more rapid pace has shot up these standings, and that is the Medina Battling Bees. Now, I can still remember that night when we covered the North Royalton playoff upset, yeah. me popping in to give you the scores, and the shocked look on your face when I informed you that Medina had upset St. Edward in the Division I, I mean, I playoffs. was already stunned because of, of, of what was happening with North Royalton <laughs> and Oak Falls. And then to hear, was like, this was like bizarro world here to hear what was going on. But, uh, look, Larry Laird has, you know, he, he adapts to what he has. And I think he figured out that, look, I've got – quarterbacks. I've got wide receivers. <laughs> We're going air raid. And the progression of Drew Aller into a, from a good quarterback to eh, somebody who's looking, you know, D1 schools are looking at this time a year ago to an elite level quarterback, you know, who knocks off St. Ignatius and knocks off St. Edward and takes, you know, men are to the limit. Um, yeah, they're for real. And, and, you know, you don't, it, it's, you have one win, you know, okay, maybe he caught Ignatius on a bad day or he caught St. Ed, St. Edward on a bad day. Not like that. And no. um, everybody knows what you're going to face when you face the Bees. 
but it, nobody's been really able to, to, to shut it down. I think Menor was able to out, kind of outscore them, take advantage of defense. But shutting down that offense is, is going to be awfully tough for opponents this year, and that's why I, th I think deservedly they're one of the top five teams this year. You mentioned the elite caliber of Drew Aller, too. Just a couple more notes on him. I mean, so elite that 247 Sports, which I follow religiously, in their composite rankings, seventh-rated quarterback in the nation. Right. Not just Ohio, in the, the nation. entire nation, committed to Penn State, Four-star prospect. To me, in this area at least, that's your leading candidate for Mr. Football. Oh, I would think so. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. Um, just got to keep him healthy. Um, that's one of the reasons why, <laughs> you know, when you watch a Medina game, I mean, Aller doesn't, you know, he'll, he'll kind of get that, that snap in the pistol or the shotgun. And a you know, couple of seconds, he throws it and it's gone. I mean, he, he, they do not want him to be scrambling around you know, and, and, and getting himself in a position where, you know, an injury is possible. You've got to keep him healthy. He's the key because he's kind of the master of that offense. Booby Miles situation. Let's hope it doesn't end the way it did for Booby Miles. I'm not saying it will, no, but, no, but, but it that's, clearly runs that's through Drew Alley. Yeah, that's Drew Alley. So, so, and that's not to say that an understudy couldn't come in and, and, and pick it up, but I just think that's, that's going to be as much important as anything else. Keep that quarterback Healthy. Yes, that's the, the key in football for most good teams, yeah. unfortunately. Number two, and maybe this is uh, maybe this is wrong on my part, but you just you look at the rosters and you got to go with this. Number two is the team that Medina actually did upset in the playoffs last year, and that is the St. Edward Eagles. Now, Dino, they just return so much Loaded. on both sides of the ball. We know how good they are. I'm not going to say that loss to Medina was a fluke, but you know that they're going to be thinking about it all offseason. Uh, Christian Ramos coming back at quarterback. He can certainly run the ball very well along with their two running backs. Trey Bixby, defensive end, four-star prospect going to Minnesota. He returns after missing all of last season due to injury. Again, St. Edward under Tom, Tom Lombardi, you know they're going to be motivated and you know they're going to be a force. Yeah, team. I mean, this is no, no surprise. I think you're right to have them where they are. Um, St. Ed's, it, it's, I always just think it, sometimes they, because they usually have to play men are in the early going and the way the schedule has been now, they'll, they played, I think last year they played St. Ignatius like in week four or week five or whatever it was. And they're going to be week seven again this yeah. year because they don't want to play the possibility of playing them two weeks in a row. row. I get it, but I also get why people are like, should be the last game of the yeah. year. But watch the progression that I, I think St. Edward may, it, you know, whether or not they start out of the gate strong, don't worry about it. They, they're, they talk about always be closing. The Eagles close. They get better as the season goes on. And they will play Menor in week three. And that brings us to our the number one team. <laughs> and that is the Menor Cardinals. And this was a very close battle for number one. I actually believe any of those top four teams you could, that I mentioned, you could have put number one. And I'm not really going to have much of an argument saying, oh, you're wrong. How could right. you do that? All of these teams are so close. The reason I went with Menor is – Track record, this is two straight years they've gone to the state semifinals. Unfortunately, lost in both those years, but clearly they haven't missed a beat with Matt Gray taking over yeah. for Steve Trevisano. They do lose Ian Kipp, at quarterback. Jacob Snow is going to step in, but he did get some experience starting yes. in the playoffs last year in that state semifinal game. Evan Harper, a big-time offensive weapon, is coming back. The big one, though, on defense, on the line, Brennan, Vernon, this might be the best player in all of Ohio, my friends. Five-star defensive end committed to Notre Dame, not Ohio State as some people thought yeah. he might go to. He did not play most at all last year. So to kind of add him is almost like you're adding some sort of free agent. I got to think it's only going to help that defense possibly make them better and in, maybe increase their chances of finally, finally getting to the mountaintop. And that's, that's one thing I think that's been missing elite level defense for the Cardinals. Um, you know, they, they've outscored I me. Mean, how many playoff games or how many games have we done? We've seen men are, I mean, what, two years ago, D-Man and I are out at mm. uh, a Byers Field, and I think they, the overtime game ended up being uh, like 45-42. Men are ended up winning that game against St. Edward. I mean, they can score. They've always been able to score offensively. But they need to be able to shut down the opposition. They need to be able to come up with that big play. They certainly did against... Uh, Medina in the playoffs, but having Harper, I think, you know, for a year defensively to create havoc 
is going to be a good thing for Matt Gray. I think, you know, if they can kind of keep those scores from being 48 to 47, you know, keep the – Keep those scores down a little you say bit. Say defense wins championships, and it, that might be yeah. that might be the missing ingredient to get them over the hump, first into a state championship game, and then to perhaps finally win that state championship they've been looking for. No pressure on Brennan Vernon, and keep in mind he's only a junior. He's barely yeah, played I mean, at the you know, level. But, but he's already. I mean, Vernon's already. We're talking the best player maybe defensively in all of Ohio, and we're really, <coughs> excuse me, going to get our first look at him for a full season. Uh, but that's, listen, that's, that's life of being a, a high recruit. And uh, I'm sure he, he welcomes the attention <laughs> too. But that's Tyler's top five. That's our look at week one. Again, our reminder, uh, our week one game of the week, WKYC.com game of the week, will take us down into Summit County, down to Cuyahoga Falls, as Benedictine will take on Walsh Jesuit. We'll join you for the play-by-play at 6.50 on Friday evening. Uh, I'll have the call. Tyler will be with me for scores and updates and then just a reminder then on Monday we'll have our week two nominees for the game of the week and you'll have two days with to vote to let us know where you want us to go for week number two here we go my friend I am so happy I'm so happy to be back doing this last year was fun too but just be back in the studio back voting on these games I mentioned earlier having my lists out and seeing your guys faces yes. whenever I talk about the possible locations it's going to be a lot of fun. It's and going to be great. As always, it's going to be a fantastic season. Yep. So, we'll, again, we'll see you Friday night at Walsh Cheswood High School. That is our week one game of the week matchup here at WKYC.com. Benedictine, the Bengals against the Warriors from Walsh Cheswood. For Tyler Carey, I'm Dave DiNatale. Thanks for watching our high school football game of the week preview show right here on WKYC.com.